Good morning, afternoon, or evening. After two weeks of Mythic Plus, Blizzard has decided they have enough data on the different types of affixes, fortified or tyrannical, to roll out even more changes. Now, changes in this case mean nerfs. A bunch of dungeons have gotten some nerfs. Some of them have gotten heavy nerfs all around. We're going to go through them and also look at whether or not were they justified and so on. So we are starting with the bigger, the more broad changes of the dungeons that happen to Plaguefall. So starting with Plaguefall is interesting because between Fortified Week and Tyrannical Week, Plaguefall has been a pretty healthy middle of the pack. They have maintained a roughly 50% success chance of your key at 10 and plus. They are nowhere near one of the hardest dungeons to complete, at least according to how the community has been running it, because the stats don't lie. But Blizzard has decided to fix a bunch of stuff. The big focus of the nerfs are literally at the start. This little thing right here. So this part, which could be previously basically completely skipped with a shroud or even going around, now has gotten some nerfs. You have the Fungal Monsters Binding Fungus now can be interrupted. Before it was a six second cast that was going to root you and all your party. Now it's a three second cast time, but can be interrupted. This was particularly annoying in a thrash pack in a pool like this, because you had not just Binding Fungus, but Fungi Storm, which could also not be interrupted. So you had two hard, casts uninterruptible only by stuns, misplacements and other types of CC. Now at least you have the ability to interrupt one of them. Talking about the other one, Fungi Storm has gotten its damage nerfed by 20%. Again, this is uninterruptible, so you have to eat it unless you have other forms of crowd control. Another weird nerf is Fenachling's Klingon Infestation, reduced by 50% per stack. Nobody was killing these insects anyways, so that's weird. The other change, which is starting to create a pattern here, is the Brood Ambushers Enveloping Webbing. Now can also be interrupted. So now we have the Fungal Mancer root and the Brood Ambusher root now can both be interrupted. So I guess Blizzard has decided that rooting players with a hard cast that's uninterruptible is toxic and anti-fun. So now they're going to give you the opportunity and the chance to actually stop it. You could stop, of course, before with stuns and other forms of CC, hard CC and not just interrupting. The only boss being changed in Plaguefall is going to be Globgrog. Globgrog has gotten its health nerfed by 10% and the health of the Slimy Smorgas board, which is the big add, reduced by 15%. Now, Globgrog wasn't the hardest of the bosses. It's interesting that they thought of nerfing this boss and not something like Domina. Venom Blade, the third boss, because Stradama was already slightly nerfed. So of the remaining bosses, I would have thought Domina Venom Blade would have been the one getting the nerfs and not Globgrog. But yeah, these were all the nerfs to Plaguefall. Interesting that they focus on the first part of the dungeon, of Thrash Mobs particularly. They were actually probably the more annoying part of the entire dungeon when it came to Thrash. The amount of abilities they had and the amount of uninterruptible abilities, it made it pretty annoying to deal with. So this is definitely going to ease up on the difficulty of the dungeon, particularly in fortified keys, since tyrannical nerfs to Globgrog are not that crucial, I think. Now, onto the other most changed dungeon, all nerfs as well. It's going to be Spires of Ascension. So, so for Spires of Ascension, we start with the biggest one, literally in all the senses of the word, because it's the Forsworn Goliath. This big fat guy has gotten its health reduced by 25%. Now, this week has probably been even more apparent because it's bolstering. When you're pulling five or six of these mobs, there is always gonna be this guy with tons of HP left because he keeps getting bolstered. It's super hard to kill because it has way more health than everything else. So this is definitely going to help. It was a pretty annoying mob. It's, it wasn't even that threatening because the biggest problem, his rebellious fists could just be perma-interrupted. It wasn't that big of a deal. It's just annoying because it was so big in HP pool. Now, the other weird, actually, change in HP pool is the 30% health nerf to the Kyrian Dark Praetor. This is weird because the Kyrian Dark Praetor is a rather harmless mob. More than anything, he was annoying. He would just keep casting swift slice and just dash everywhere. So most of the time, you would end up with him last one alive because nobody is doing AoE to him because he's too far away, so he gets ignored for a while. That's what would happen. So I guess this health is Blizzard trying to say, yeah, sorry, uh, we fucked up with this one. It's pretty annoying to deal with, just kill him faster, you know? Then we go on to two changes which are pretty significant because this is a case of Blizzard literally removing an ability from the game. So Aether Drivers, or Aether, Aether Drivers, no longer use the Mo Touch Spittle ability. So these guys 
were already annoying because they have insidious venom. Of course, it's the tank dot that is going to keep stacking up, so it's just going to be very annoying. Because there are also, when you pull them, quite a few other things you want to dispel, and this, this one was obviously high priority on the tank. Now, though, they get their Motach Spit removed. The straight line orbs that are going to leave behind a pool on the ground and take for dot damage, it was just annoying to deal with, to navigate the pack around, filled with these things on the ground. I guess Blizzard thought, these guys come in packs, there is multiple of them always together, they are already stacking Insidious Venom on the tank, we don't need to also have this clutter on the ground with them. And then the other removed ability, but this one is way more important, is going to be for the Forsworn Hellion. So the Hellions, you might have forgotten who they are, they are the elite forces of the Forsworn, which reside in the platform before the third boss. There is a problem though, this platform was just avoided by most people. You would just do a mega skip and avoid any of that. And that's where all the Hellions are. So basically, if you always took this skip, you just never kill them. Because you don't want to kill them because they were very annoying. They had a bunch of different things that made them annoying. They had the menacing presence, which was basically a pulsating dot to all your party. Every time they would use their impact, their leap and, and smash down, they would leave behind a bigger pool of shit on the ground that you needed to avoid. And lastly, and more cancerously, they had Crescendo. Crescendo was the cross-shaped set of missiles that would explode from the ground and deal a ton of damage. That has been now removed, so they no longer do Crescendo, they no longer do this heavy AoE. This was a very fast set of missiles, which was actually very difficult to avoid, particularly because you could never tell where they would spawn from. It's not that they would be directly in front of the mob, directly to the sides. It was sort of weird, the angling, so you could never just avoid it preemptively. I think that if it was given with a warning, if it gave a direction of this ability, so giving you the ability to dodge, I think it would have been fine. But as it was in the game, it was actually pretty annoying to, to, to deal with this because you couldn't just predict it properly. The last set of nerfs, though, four spires of ascension, again, not touching the bosses, are going to be just for thrash. And that is literally the last thrash of the dungeon because it's the last three guardians of Devos, Astronos, Lachesis, and Flotos. So what they do, of course, these three adds, these three mobs have the fates intertwined mechanic where when you kill one, they transfer their key ability to the next one, and then they both transfer it to the last one. The annoying thing with these three was their intimidated and oppression ones. You know, intimidated stacking up a, a dot on you, and oppression stacking up the increased damage taken. The annoying thing was that maybe you killed one of them with 10 seconds left on the debuff, so you had to wait 10 seconds before pulling the next one. Otherwise, he would also keep refreshing that debuff constantly, so you had to wait and wait and wait. Now, these debuffs are going to drop off faster out of combat, so you can just chain pull them without having to wait. Now, before going further on the next dungeons, we have to mention that Spires of Ascension also wasn't a particularly tough dungeon. The success rate of Spires of Ascension was pretty high, 55%. Now, one thing we should mention, though, is that Spires of Ascension on Fortified was the second least successful dungeon only behind the other side, and all of these nerfs have basically just targeted Thrash. So, Fortified Key being the Thrash-focused key, the Thrash-focused affix, had Spires of Ascension as one of the hardest, and now all of these nerfs are actually targeting the Thrash. So maybe there was a correlation to that, that Blizzard saw as well. Now, the last nerfs are going to be to Necrotic Quake and Theater of Pain, but these nerfs are just focused on bosses, not Thrash. So, for Necrotic Quake, Necrotic Wake had gotten its Thrash nerfed before. Mutilate and Tenderize, I mentioned it multiple times, they've gotten changed and nerfed. Pitch Flesh, the boss upstairs, also had gotten its Mutilate nerfed. So the Thrash wasn't that big of a deal anymore. Most of the Thrash in Necrotic Wake is now pretty simple and manageable. Before you go up to Necropolis, you really just have the Corpse Harvesters, the one that cast Drain Fluids, that are could be a, a danger. You do have the Necromancer and then the mini boss Narzuda, that you have to deal with, that can also be pretty challenging. But beyond these little hurdles, the rest is just pretty straightforward. The real problem with the Thrash was upstairs in the Necropolis, which has got the nerf. So the rest was the bosses. So the first boss was very, very simple, because you can get there at 20% Thrash progression, which means you spawn Prideful. You are in front of a Kyrian construct, so you can also get the Kyrian buff, and you can Bloodlust. The first boss can just melt immediately. The last boss wasn't that difficult. It also could be it still can be cheesed. When you get brought down in the gauntlet, you can jump off immediately, kill yourself, and get your body back up 
in the platform and get combat rest. This way you lose no time and also you will not spawn the big circle of eyes that you spawn when you finish the gauntlet, which is your soft and rage mechanic, because eventually the entire room will be covered. The real problems were the two guys in the middle. Stitch Flesh in the Necropolis, which got nerfed from his damage in Mutilate, and then there was a Marth, which was left unchecked. What was the problem with a Marth? Well, first of all, some problems in grouping up the adds, the tank being able to get them all together, AOE them all together and fast enough to kill them, while also interrupting the Frostbolt volley, which does a ton of damage, while also the beam that a Mart cast was coming in, so you had to dodge as well. It was pretty chaotic, but the real problem was his Tortured Echoes. Tortured Echoes was the stacking AOE damage buff he would get after killing, or rather harvesting, the deaths of allies and enemies. So assuming you don't die in the fight, he's gonna keep gaining stacks and stacks and stacks every time he casts Land of the Dead and resurrects minions, so you have to kill them or they kill you, and then he's going to blow them up and get stacks. These stacks will just go up infinitely. Now the stacks are going to be capped. They're going to be capped by a timer because Tortured Echoes now only has a 30 second duration. Now Final Harvest, which is what he casts to gain these stacks, is cast every 45 seconds, sometimes even more because, you know, other spells take priority. But either way, he will never get to cast Final Harvest twice while this debuff is still going, so it will always expire. The trade-off for this is that now Tortured Echoes does 100% more damage. This is still a heavy net nerf. Before, he would do Tortured Echoes, Tortured Echoes, Tortured Echoes, Tortured Echoes, and stacks going up and up and up and up and up. Now, he does Tortured Echoes for double damage, the stacks drop, Tortured Echoes for double damage, the stacks drop, Tortured Echoes for double damage. So now it is way more manageable. And you also have a pretty nice window between the end of the stacks of the first Tortured Echoes and the second cast of Final Harvest where there is no more AoE, so your healer can have some rest, can pick back up the health before the next set of Tortured Echo AoE comes in. So it is much more manageable now on Tyrannical, which was the problem of this dungeon this week. Now on for the nerfs in Theater of Pain. Now here is where I thought I was going blind. In Theater of Pain, Cold Tarok, Grasping Hands now correctly appears at two locations, as well as fixed an issue that sometimes caused only one soul to become bound by Grasping Hands. So I've run it a few times recently and multiple times I've been in a situation where you had no Grasping Hands available after you used one, there was no second. So the unlucky guy who would get targeted by Draw Soul had to just take it all without having the Grasping Hands to sit on. And it is pretty dangerous because on Tyrannical it does a lot of ticking damage, so it was a problem. I'm glad it's fixed. I'm not even sure if we can consider this a nerf because this wasn't even supposed to happen. The actual nerfs though, this were intended fully, are to Mordretta, the last boss. So Mordretta is going to get Echoes of Carnage, damage reduced by 50%, which is heavy nerf. Dark Devastation, which is the beam, is going to have a 2.5 second cast time instead of a 1.5 second cast time. And the Ghostly Charge also is going to have the cast time increase to 3.5 seconds. Echoes of Carnage is definitely the biggest of the nerfs here, because number one, Dark Devastation is fully dodgeable, and number two, Ghostly Charge is fully dodgeable. So if you're a good player and you were dodging these things before, these are literally not nerfs to you. They do nothing to you. The real change is the, the fact that Echoes of Carnage is going to get this damage cut by 50%. This was the reason why you wanted to, you know, Bloodlust at 50% and burst her down, blah blah blah. When she enters 50%, she enables the Echoes and creates basically ticking damage on all the party forever until either you're dead or she's dead. Now this damage has been cut in half. That's it. So it's a pretty big nerf. Now, these are all the changes to dungeons. So after we have looked at these changes, we have to look at the dungeons that survived the sweeping set of nerfs. So the survivors are the other side, Mists of Tirnaseeth, Sanguine Depths and Halls of Atonement. Now, here there are two super big standouts, the other side and Mists. I know you like your easy key, your free key, but Mists of Tirnaseeth is far too easy right now. So Mists is the dungeon that required buffs, and I'm surprised that Blizzard didn't actually buff the dungeon. They seem to have targeted some particular bosses that were considered too easy or particular groups of trash mobs that were considered too hard. Inspires, they saw that pretty clearly. They saw that at the start of Plaguefall with all the mushroom mobs. They saw that particular bosses like Amarth and Mordretta. So I would have expected them to do the same thing with Mists, but on the other side, so buffs. 
we missed. Instead, still nothing so far. The same can be said for the other side. I thought that if you can target a Marth for being a difficult boss or even more Dreta in Theater of Pain, Theater of Pain in Tyrannical has a 50% success chance and the other side has a 25%. I think in the other side, the midget Maleficent Mana Storm should have gotten her back in, but so nerfed because it takes way too hard on the tank with too much stuff going on for the rest of your group. And then you also have the Arcane Lightning on Dealer Zyaxa, which is really dangerous in Tyrannical. There is a lot of damage going on in that entire fight, and that Arcane Lightning is pretty annoying because it also creates even more problems in Pugs, because that should be handled. People essentially trading the debuff between themselves, because the more you have the Arcane Lightning on you, the more it's going to stack up the damage debuff on you. So, for example, if you have a tank and a melee DPS, what's going to happen is... The tank will get the debuff and the arcane lightning will then jump to the melee and because the closest to the melee dps is the tank the debuff is going to jump to the tank again and then to the melee again and then to the tank again and they will kill themselves so it requires some more <laughs> some more coordination than what a pug would get and it becomes a little bit annoying other dungeons that are surprising are sanguine depths and Alls of atonement so sanguine depths and Alls of atonement are currently the second and third most successful dungeons behind mists Last week in Fortified, Halls of Atonement was still the second most successful dungeon as well. Halls of Atonement seems heavily undertuned, particularly with the amount of trash pulls you can make in the lower floor. And then after you kill the first boss, you can literally shroud the entirety of the second part of the dungeon and literally just do Echelon, a couple of trash, Alis, one pack of trash, last boss, or back to back to back, because the trash is so clumped and together in the first side of the dungeon. And the bosses are also undertuned. The first boss is super undertuned. You have Alice that has gotten nerfed. Alice is no longer a DPS fight because now the urns where you have to kite the ghosts respawn. So you never run out. So it's always doable. A couple of mechanics in Sanguine Depths are a little annoying that could warrant a nerf. Maybe something like the chain bindings that require basically all the melee to fuck off unless they want to tank it forever. And then you have, of course, Castigate. This is my most annoying ability. I don't want to see this. I think it's really annoying. Like, it's just bad design. The circle of Castigate is far too big. It's basically going to block a melee DPS from actually damaging the boss because the circle is so large. And the cast is very fast, so you have very little time to react, which means one, two, or three ticks are going to just be done to the rest of the party, even if you were trying to spread. I think it's a pretty annoying ability and should be tuned a little bit. But yeah, overall, I'm surprised that particularly Mist and the other side were not touched. Now, spending about one minute on Castro Natria, because we have gotten slight changes to Stone Legion Generals. Now, Anima Orbs and Massive Anima Orbs, those are the orbs dropped in Mythic by the Stone Legion Goliath and the Stone Legion Commando that you need to pick up and give to Renatal. Now you can no longer pick them up if you have Anima Injection, Anima Infection or Volatile Anima Injection and Infection. This is to make you basically cycle players doing this task and not just repeat it endlessly with the same. The bigger change is going to be to the Stone Legion Skirmisher. Stone Legion Skirmisher is the Mythic only add. This guy is basically going to be doing nothing other than cast Wicked Slaughter. Wicked Slaughter is going to apply Wicked Laceration. Wicked Laceration is the same bleeding debuff that General Kal leaves behind when she does Wicked Blade. The thing you have to go in the Crystallize, in the Crystallize Explosion, to clear, because otherwise the, the bleed is going to last forever. In Mythic, not even immunities can get rid of the bleed. So this ad was just annoying because it would just keep applying more bleeds than normal, so more people had to constantly clear their debuffs. Now, the cooldown of this ability went from 8 seconds to 10. So you will have less people over time needing to clear their bleeds because of this ad. But that was all for raids. Nothing else has been changed. Now, we are done with all the changes. We are done with all the nerfs in dungeons. I'm not too moved by the changes in Plaguefall because I, it's not that I was doing these mobs anyways. In Spires of Ascension, pretty happy about the changes. The nerf to Amarth is very much needed. The one to Kultarok, again... Is probably a fix more than a nerf. And the one to Mordreta is okay, but still. The two nerfs she got were from mechanics you were supposed to dodge completely anyways. What we are going to be looking at tomorrow, because it's going to be the first full completed Mythic Week, is comparing the first week of Mythic progression of this expansion to the last couple and see how it has gone. More kills, less kills, how's the progression gone? We're going to be looking at that. It's also the only week where it's going to be very relevant because if you haven't noticed in like 
less than three days is gonna be Christmas. So the next week and the week after that with New Year's and New Year's Eve, rating is going to be impaired. So we can't properly look at progression of the next couple of weeks for this expansion and compare it to the previous expansions because way more guilds are going to be affected by this compared to how they would have run the raids normally. Of course, not the top guilds, not the top 10, top 20 maybe even, guilds who will continue raiding, but in the broader scope, when you start looking at top 50, top 100, 200, of course, many more guilds are going to be affected by this. So the first week is really the more relevant one. That can give us the most reliable data. So we will see how the first week went tomorrow. With this, I will leave. See you guys soon, I guess tomorrow. And in the meantime, it's cold, but I'm still buying gelato.